Hi and welcome back to the final lesson and congratulations in having made it through the whole course and if you've been following along you will have your very own risk management dashboard. So let's go through and just recap on what we've achieved in some of the functionality of this dashboard. So the, the page we're looking at just now is the front page and it gives us a high level overview of the risk status. So the risk status, if you remember, there's four different categories. There's red, there's orange, there's amber and there's green. So they've got different different status colours and they've got different meanings. So we've got the status colour, we've colour coded that and um, that will change depending on the risk status and then we've got a description of what that actually means. High risk of high business impact failure. We've then got some, we've obviously got the risk matrix here and that's telling us what the current risk is. So we can see we've got two high or red risk grouping, so high risk grouping defects here. So that's middle tier, there are two high risk defects at the site. Two of these defects are scheduled for repair in the next seven days, so it's telling us that we're, that's why it's got a tick here, so we've got two high risk defects, but they're scheduled for repair quite soon. And none of these defects are overdue in, in our backlog. So it just gives you us, and any executive or any leader looking at this can see at a glance, yeah, we've got an issue, but actually things are under control. Okay, two of them are scheduled for repair in the next week. None of these in backlog, so it's not as bad as it maybe initially looks. So that's the front page. Next, if you want to see the detail, so that's the next thing we do. We can click on here, and that is going to take us to the next page, which is the same matrix, but it allows you to click on here, and you can go and look at each of the work orders or the list of work orders that are sitting in each one of these risk ranking areas also allows you to go and look at it by department. So that was quite important to be able to look at each department for the department supervisors or leaders to be able to look at their work, filter on their work and get a perspective on what jobs are most important for them to, to push and to liquidate. So this would be an example here if we would want to go in and make sure that we had this job here um, ready to go. The next page we've got, I'll just unselect that, and we've got obviously got the total number at the top here. The next page we've got is really looking at m mitigation analysis. So we went through the, the concept of pre and post mitigation risk, and we can see here that the pre mitigation risk has got a matrix and the post mitigation risk has got a matrix. So pre mitigation, we can see with 18 in this area here. And we've been able to, through a temporary repair or some sort of control, we've been able to mitigate that risk. So we can click on here and we can see that one stayed the same, but a lot of the other ones have reduced um, either in likelihood or in both likelihood and in severity. And that allows us to look at individual risk ranking um, options, basically, for individual risk ranking kind of reductions. But we've also got at the bottom here that aggregated to a risk group, the concept of a risk group. So it's a lot easier to deal with the aggregation at these group levels than it is to look at a five by five, it'd be 25 different options here. So we can see we've got low, medium and high. And we can see quite clearly that each one of these, although well, the medium has reduced and the high has reduced and the low has increased. So yeah, we've, we've not liquidated anything between the pre and the post mitigation because we're only looking at work orders that are still open but we can see by putting some mitigation in place we've certainly managed to reduce the high, reduce the medium and increase the low so that reflects the reducing severity and likelihood. Um, along here we've got that information quantified basically so we can see here 20, anything with a risk one kind of 20 went from 4 to 3, it was a difference of 3 and it was reduced by 75% and we can see there's a nice graph here that allows us to see pictorially the, the sort of ebb and flow of the, the risk as it goes from high to low and making sure that this is decreasing generally speaking and these are increasing because we're, we're moving things from this area and this area here into this lower area here. Um, we can see at a risk grouping level exactly what's happened. These have reduced by, nine, the, high risk, the high risk group is reduced by 92% from 24 to, to 2. This one's reduced by 40% and this one's increased by 72%. So that's a really good picture. Let's just see that we are managing the risk. We've got the mitigation in place and we are mitigating some of the work and um, reducing the risk to the site. 
And then we've got this post mitigation risk matrix, which is the one we're most interested in because that's the current risk at the site. Then we want to see, well, how are things looking over time? So we've got this trend and the trend allows us to look at the high, medium and low risk as well as total number of defects and see what has been happening over time. And we've automatically generated some narrative to just to help add a little bit of context to these. So we can see here the high risk defects have increased by 100% from 1 to 2. So the eye is drawn to these bold, re reduced by 27%, reduced by 35%. So the eye is drawn to these. Uh, the colour coding helps to keep consistency across the different, sh the different um, sheets. So we can see anytime we're looking at this colour here, we're talking high risk, medium risk and, and, low, and low risk. And we've highlighted the starting point, the high point and the low point for each one of these. And that just helps keep it simple. It's quite a crowded little chart here, so we don't want there to be a number shown for every single data point, just the ones we're really interested in at the start and at the end is what we're, we're really interested in. Now we've also put the target line in here. It's got its pros and cons. It does kind of encroach on some of these data points here, but it's um, it's important to be able to see that target line and underneath we've got some further narrative and that's just using a slightly different approach to this one here. This was a, if you remember, this was a um, enlightened data story it was called and it allowed us to generate these tech, automatically generate these text narratives with these bold measures so that we could draw attention to them. This one was done slightly differently just to show you the two options and I think too much bold would have probably devalued these at the top here. So what we've done instead is we've just created these little simple buttons here or simple colours, um, bullet points and if it's red it kind of draws your attention there and then you can read the narrative here. The current value is 2, current value of 2 is above the target of 0 by 2. Okay, we could have maybe put a percentage in here or whatever but um, it's just really telling us if it's black, well we don't really need to be drawn to this but we can go and read it anyway. The current value is 503 is below the target of 500 by 47. And, and here's the overall target at the bottom. So we've got a really good understanding of the risk. We can start to articulate that and the, the dashboard creates the commentary, makes it dead straightforward to put that into a report or just paste it into a report or even just an executive could just look at it here this, or the team leader or a site, a site manager and say, are we managing the risk? Is it overall reducing? How are we doing against our targets? And then um, start to investigate how we can do a bit better. Okay, so really appreciate you taking the time to come through the course, work through the course, the um, I'll attach and um, make the final um, PBIX file available should you want to download it and um, obviously the data sources and any of the presentation material that goes along with it so you can go and create your own dashboard or just take the one I've got and start to update it. Thanks again for listening, thanks again for joining me in the course and I'll talk to you the next time.